Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating tables with multiple columns, and we're also going to look at a new data type, int. So uh, at the moment, I've got a table called users. If I do desk users, we can see that table. Uh, it's just got one column in at the moment. One thing to note at this point is that if you're using the MySQL Workbench, you can click on the commands in this output pane right at the bottom, right click them and go to replace SQL with selected items. And that will actually um, overwrite what's currently in the SQL pane, query pane, and replace it with the query you selected. So it's a really useful feature if you want to reuse some SQL that you uh, that you executed previously. And uh, if you're using a command line, often command lines have a feature where you can just press the up arrow to get back to previous queries. Usually a command line will give you some way of doing that, um, even if you, you, you might have to configure something sometimes to get it to work. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I'm going to actually drop this table. In other words, delete it. I'm going to say drop table users. And let's, let's just check, let's do we'll double check, let's do show tables and we can see that the users table is now gone. So obviously you have to be careful with this query. And I'm going to say create table users, so we're going to recreate it. And I'm going to create it with two columns. I'm going to say ID, that's going to be the name of the first column. And I'm going to make it an int. And an int is a numerical value in MySQL. It can store integers, so not floating point numbers, you know, with a decimal point in them, just integer values. And we'll put a comma in and make the second column now username text. So now we've got two columns, ID and username. Uh, so in this, in this statement here, where you specify the columns of the table, you can provide a comma separated list with, there can be lots of columns in there to add multiple columns to your table. Let's execute this. And um, where are we? In fact, uh, if yeah, I selected that and executed it, which only executes part of it, but I want the whole thing, so I'll deselect that, run it again. And yes, it's, it's run fine now. And let's do a desk users. So there we've got two values. Uh, they are both allowed to be null at this point. And we're gonna look at that a bit more shortly. Let's just insert some data in there. So this, you can, probably guess how this works. In fact, if you want to pause the recording, pause the video and um, have a go at it yourself, you can probably figure it out. But let's try it. Let's say insert into users ID username values and we'll put in, let's put in one for the ID and the text goes in quotes. The text values have to be in quotes and let's say username Bob. So once again, we, we can just replace where we previously had a single column, we can replace it with a comma separated list. We'll run that. And let's put another one in if it ran okay, which I see that it did. Let's put Vicky in, run that. And now let's do select star from users. So we've got Bob and Vicky. Uh, so that's it for this tutorial. Do have a go at that yourself. You, you can even create tables with multiple columns. You can have multiple text columns, multiple integer columns, whenever you like. And um, one thing probably that's worth mentioning already at this point is if you search in Google or your favorite search engine for MySQL types, you can find a list of the different data types that you can use. We've seen int and text so far, but there's a lot of different types here. If we go to numeric types, for instance, and then we go to integer types, we can see that an int it can store integers between these two big values, but sometimes you want a smaller integer value. It's better to use a smaller one if you know you're only gonna small, store small values of integers because that takes up less space in your database. So you might use small int, tiny int, or conversely, if you need a really massive integer in there, you might want to use big int. Okay, so uh, that's it for this tutorial. Have a go at that because we're going to build on it in the next tutorial. So until next time, happy coding.